Hey everybody, Greg here, and I'm gonna to try to keep this video short. It's an updated version of something I posted a while back regarding how to get set up with a WordPress.com user account. There are a lot of reasons why you might need to do this. Um, initially, it could just be that you're gonna be an administrator or contributor to an existing WordPress.com website. Also, um, even just being having this user account, it lets you have a reader view so you can sign up to various WordPress sites and get an aggregate view of all the news on those different sites that you're following. Um, but I want people to see how to get started without having to pay for hosting necessarily. I think it's a good idea to get the account set up for free and then from there you can add on as many websites as you want to create. So I'm beginning here at the WordPress.com web page and you can see the red arrow pointing up to get started. And you know this changes all the time so what I'm showing you today, uh, today is the 3rd of May 2019, it could be different in a week but this should be pretty close to the experience that you're gonna get when you go to WordPress.com. So let's go ahead and click on the get started link and now um, you're going to want to fill in your email address your username and choose a password okay if the username is already in use you'll be told that once you click on create your account so you may need to go back and fill that in with something that's unique that hasn't been used at wordpress.com yet the reason this part is important is because you don't want to end up with multiple user accounts on WordPress.com. You want to have one user account with one email address and keep that current and have all your websites under that. Okay, it's sort of like on Facebook where you have maybe different Facebook pages that you manage under one account. It's, it just streamlines things quite a bit. So go ahead and fill that in go to the next screen and here is where you'll want to go ahead and just click blog it'll it'll make things easier initially you can always change these things later um, but choose blog and you will be given a choice of topics just general categories to choose from I'm suggesting that you choose education uh, to, to fill that in of what your blog is about and then continue and give your site a name. This can change later. Uh, you, I don't know how familiar your you are with websites, but you know websites have a URL, um, which is whatever name you want it to be, .com, typically. Um, and once you have that, it's registered and that stays the same, but the, word, the website name is a description one or a few words usually that describe you know what the site's about and that's like the title of the site but not the address of the site um, and you can add domains later if you want to have different website addresses pointing to the same site you can do that but just to keep it simple this is where you'll put in a description and then move to the next step and this is where you would give the site an address so this is what's important at this step is that instead of getting you know sucked into having a dot-com domain name or paying for hosting or whatever this is where you want to choose the free version of what they're offering so I'm giving an example um, my WordPress website name um, and then you know we can do dot com we can do hyphens or whatever but you'll notice and this is what I, I want you to focus in on is that down um, halfway down the page and, and on the right there it says that you can get my website name dot home dot blog for free so WordPress for a long time has had this option where you can get a free blog address it's not your own dot com site but at least it's a name for a blog and um, that's a way to get started for free so let's go ahead and choose that free option we'll say select and there, there also I want to make a distinction here there's the domain name you choose and if if you do go with the dot com it ends up being like eighteen dollars a year through wordpress.com that's separate from their hosting fee it used to be combined in the past uh, there was a, a time years ago where you could sign up for eighteen dollars a year and have your own dot com uh, hosted with wordpress.com is pretty amazing hosting and a domain name for 18 bucks and there'd be a little bit of advertising um, and then they bumped that up 
uh, a few years ago to $48 a year and that included the domain and then a website with hosting and no advertising which was nice um, and where they're currently at you'll see is you know there's this one option that's three dollars a month um, and and they may bump that up to five dollars a month depending on what their plans are that they're offering but basically say three to five a month so it could be you know um, 36 maybe uh, 60 dollars a year somewhere around in there and then separately the domain name another 18 bucks um, for hosting so I wanted to explain that but notice on the left here we have an option that says free best for students zero dollars so um, you will have that WordPress advertising potentially on your site um, but you know you do get these other options and it gets you set up with your WordPress user account okay which we set up a few steps ago um, and I also want to mention that whatever this is that you're setting up for free you don't have to use it you can just kind of let it sit there and don't promote it um, but now that's it we go to the next step your site's been created you've been charged nothing <laughs> you know um, and the only drawback is that you don't have your own com domain website but at least you have a WordPress user account and now you can be a contributor to other sites you can set up your um, you'll see there's an option for the reader up there in the upper left corner uh, so you can read content from other sites and have it aggregated um, but that's that's it and from here on out whenever you log into wordpress.com you'll use that uh, email address or username and password that we set up a few steps ago and so this is the the getting started first step um, and if, if you also have you know volunteers if you're with a nonprofit and you have volunteers working with you they would go through this process to get a free account with wordpress.com and then you could um, invite them to be contributors or editors or administrators for your website or blog so I hope this has been helpful I wanted to provide the updated version because like I say it the process does change a little bit and so uh, Feel free to ask any questions. If you're on YouTube, you can go below and, and post comments. Please, uh, you know, if you like the video, click like. If you like, uh, would like to receive more of this content, um, please subscribe. And I appreciate all of the uh, comments and likes and subscriptions. So thanks again, and uh, see you in the next video.